Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia, Claudia, Claudia. David, if you think you're fooling me, pretending you're asleep, you're not. I'm not? No. What's the use? I can't ever fool you. I'm awake. I saw your eyelids fluttering. How are you, David? No, no, no. Now, don't talk. Go back to sleep. Don't I get a kiss? Well, I... I guess I don't see why not. Then lean over. Where would you like it? On the cheek? I am not your son. On the forehead? I am not a stranger. Then where else? I am your husband. Not much of one, what there is left of me, but the law still says that I am your husband. Then, there? There. That was nice. I never kissed a man in a hospital before. How are you, darling? Not me. How are you? Well, you can see how I am. Flat on my back like a good for nothing. Do you hurt much? Mm, Not much. My shoulder a little. How's your head? Aches a little. Well... At least you've got a head. Sometimes I feel as if I had two. Well, I only see one. Well, that's your limitation, funny face. <laughs> David, don't talk if, if it hurts you. So you think this is your big chance to do all the talking, Yes, and I you? intend to make the most of it. You are not to exert yourself. Mm, who says? Dr. Barry says. Now, what else does he say? That you're coming along fine, and seeing as it's only two days since your car accident, you're to keep quiet and lie still, much as you'd rather not. I wish I did rather not. The truth of the matter is, I don't. Just the thought of getting up wears me out. Well, that's that's a good sign. Maybe you can figure that one out. Well, it shows you're normal. You're not supposed to want to get up. You're supposed to want to lie back and sleep and sleep and and listen to me talk. How long can you talk? Forever. How long did Dr. Barry say I'd be laid up? He didn't say. No, you never were a good liar, my love. Honestly, David, he didn't say. He said it depends on you. And if I do have to be laid up, why can't I be laid up at home? No special reason. In a few days, maybe, when you don't need nurses anymore to give you pills and things. I'd love to have you home, David, but... No, no. I I wouldn't come home till I was sure I wouldn't be a nuisance to you. That's a fine way to talk. I mean it. This way you can take it a little easier. Please stop worrying about me, David. No, I suppose you're right. I suppose when a man allows another car to crash into him... David, the roads were skiddy. It was raining. uh, He ends up in a hospital with a concussion and a broken collarbone and an assortment of plums all over him. Plums? I suppose that gives him a privilege not to worry about his wife. David, will you stop talking so silly? None of this was your fault. The other man was drunk. He hit you. You couldn't help it. He's, uh, he's dead, isn't he? Well, it wasn't your fault. Everybody says so. I know, I know it wasn't. I guess I'm just being a poor sport. I don't blame you. If it happened to me, I'd, I'd be so angry, I'd, I'd... Mm-hmm. What would you do? I'd hit the ceiling. <laughs> that I'd like to see. Come here. Ouch! You need a shave. How? Oh. Looks like the house of David. It's been two days. (laughs) I like you without a shave. Is it only two days? Only. Honey, it's hard to believe. I I missed you so much. House is all different. It seems twice as big as it used to be. Oh, I forgot. Everybody sends you their love. Fritz, Bertha, Mama, even the baby. Well, send them mine. Even the baby. Will do. Feed you well? Fine, fine. That's what Bertha is most worried about. She says, when you get home, she'll fatten you up. Now tell her I'm probably getting fat already. <laughs> Not having much exercise, you Do know. you good for a change. I've always thought you you, you overdid. Overdid what? Work. Oh. In the office and on the farm, you, you, you work too hard. Oh, the workmen. By the way, they started work on the, on the barn this morning. They did? I'm not so sure that we should have... Started. I am. I'm very sure. Fritz asked me if we should go ahead with it, and I said yes. It'll be finished in in just a month. It costs a lot of money. We have it. Your thousand-dollar bonus, remember? 
That was for you, for the house and the furniture. Me and the furniture can wait. When you've got workmen, you must beat them while they're hot. This confounded hospital business is going to cost money, too. Well, it's just about time you spend a little something on yourself. David, I've thought of it. I've thought it all out. The barn was the right thing to do. I know it. Well, you're the boss. No, I'm not. I know it's right because you're the boss and you wanted it done, so one way or another it will be done. Fritz has the plans. I, I wish I were there, too. So do all of us. You you lie back and don't talk anymore. I'll, I'll have to leave. A yeah, broken collarbone has nothing to do with talking. But a concussion does, so shut up. Now, that's what happens the minute a man lets himself be taken to a hospital. <laughs> I'm only treating you back the way you treated me when I was in the hospital. Yes, but you had a baby. I'm not having anything. Are you jealous? You're darn right I am. <laughs> you know, it's strange, but the night you went into the hospital to have the baby, I kept wishing it was I. What a fool I was. Now I realize that that would have been twice as much trouble for you. How right you are, darling. Whoever decided women would be the baby bearer certainly knew what he was doing. Somehow I can't see men doing it either. <laughs> We're not made for that kind of courage, I guess. Now, if you will be so kind, Mr. Norton, as to try and plug up your stream of verbiage. Now, verbiage. how do you like that for a word? Verbiage, Please. verbiage, verbiage. You've outdone yourself. Well, anyway, if you'll just try to keep quiet, I will entertain you. Uh -oh, free. Oh, uh oh, free. Huh? I bet you bet I can't. Hmm? You're an actress. It's your profession to entertain people, so I don't say you can't. I'm your wife, and you're not people, so it's different. Oh. Now, uh, would you like me to read aloud? Poetry or detective stories? I brought them both along, all kinds. And the newspaper, I've got that too, four of them. You, uh... Or what? You just talk. Just talk? Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's better than any poetry. Oh, there's that concussion again, making you talk crazy. Well, if you insist. Now let me see. Um, oh, what new that I haven't told you? Has Roger called? Oh, I spoke to Lottie. She oh. said, and I quote. There's nothing new, cross your fingers, at the office. She said for you not to worry and that, thank goodness, knock wood, architect business was slack and she was manicuring herself waiting for the phone to <laughs> buzz a room. <laughs> oh, shouldn't laugh. Is that her time? Is that supposed to be a comfort? It is. Would you rather the office be so busy that Lottie and Roger couldn't handle things? Count your blessings, Mr. Norton. No, I'm counting. I'm then, uh, oh, Jared Tucker called. He wants to come and visit you, he do. He said... Tell that young scoundrel I'm going to be ambling over to give a piece of what have you. Getting himself near killed. He's got no more sense than a woodchuck. That's what he said to tell you. Well, tell Jared I ain't. I'll tell him. And then, uh... Oh, I know. George Reynolds oh, called. George. He told me to tell you to hurry up and get well. Mm -hmm. The Thank school you, boy's going to meet and vote the money for building the new schoolhouse. They're going to vote the amount you said you needed, and they're not going to cut a penny off. What do you think of that? Not cut a penny off. Not a penny. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good news. He said no matter how long it would take you to get well, nobody's going to touch that building but you. It can wait, he said. We've... We've got a swell bunch of neighbors up here, huh? Well, they think you're pretty swell, too. Oh, and Gertrude called, too. She's going to come and see you. Oh, 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 oh. heavens preserve me. <laughs> and our neighbor, Matthew Warren, called. You know, he and Fritz seem to be getting to be great friends. Yeah, I thought they would. And remember the little boy who we went fishing with? I sure do. The one who lost his father? Mm-hmm. I remember him well. Well, he called this morning. He did? I think. He wants to be a father to Bobby while you're gone. <laughs> he knows what not having one means, I guess. I guess so. <coughs> hmm. Cough a little. Say, um... Want some water? How did all these people know? Oh, and there was a beautiful article about you in the Eastbrook Town Crier. Picture and everything. Picture? I don't know where they got that picture. I haven't even got a decent one of you. Well, you can, uh, you can clip that one. Oh, and you didn't take an article for people to know. They'd have known. I guess so. Because that's the way it is up here. People share happiness and they share... Everything. Just think, if I hadn't married you, I'd never have moved to Eastbrook. I'd never have... A lot of things. Wasn't it lucky for me we got married? It's been quite a... Oh, quite a year. Oh, longer. A year and nine days. 
I'd like every one of them again, darling. Yes, even including the last two. You're a sucker for punishment. David, a little punishment never hurt anybody. I even think that going without it too long, that can hurt even more. Oh, here I am talking to you seriously, and I'm supposed to entertain you. Why don't you tell me to shut up? For the simple reason that you've been telling me to shut up. Oh, I'd just as leave sit in silence. Well, you don't have to go to that extreme. Well, I haven't got anything more to say anyway. Mm, that'll be the day. It's funny. <laughs> On the way over, I was just bursting with millions of things to tell you. It was such a long time since yesterday. Now that I'm here, it's, it's, it's all so, so dull. I hear myself talking, and it's, I don't know, it's not what I want to say at all. What do you want to say? I don't know exactly, except... Except I... I, I miss you, too. Do you? What do you think? If it's anything the way I miss you. I wasn't going to tell you. I didn't want you to think I'm going around moping. And I know you're not. How do you know? Because that's not the kind of girl I married. The kind of girl I married can get along fine. No matter what. The kind of girl you married isn't as sure of herself as you are of her. I'm not interested in what she thinks of herself. You're not? What I think is more important, and I think she can get along fine. She's trying. She'll probably come home to find the bank balance overdrawn, the bond built wrong, and all kinds of terrible things. So don't say I didn't warn you. On my oath, I won't. David, would you like to go back to sleep now? If you would, just say so. Don't stand on formalities. That's all I've been doing, sleeping. I'm certainly not going to do it while you're here. The bed comfortable? Mm-hmm. I think I ought to leave you, darling. You won't sleep while I'm here. I'm tired of sleeping. Dr. Barry's rules. Oh, maybe you're right. <clears throat> maybe I will sleep. <laughs> I always knew you were a lazy loafer at heart. Will you come back? I'll do even more than that. Close your eyes. Give me your hand. And darling, I'll never leave you. We get so used to seeing higher and higher prices, especially on food and drink, we overlook the fact that a few things are still obtainable at the same low prices. Name one, you say? Very well, I will. Coca-Cola. You can still buy Coke for five cents a bottle, six for a quarter, or a dollar a case. And a dollar for 24 bottles of delicious refreshment is not very much, you'll admit. With which pleasant reflection I leave you, suggesting that you put Coke on your marketing list today. Uh, David, are you asleep yet? No, just lying here, staring at the light in the ceiling. Well, just thought I'd drop in to say hello. Say, you're looking pretty all right. No, oh, I'm coming along. Uh, you bet you are. Any day now, you'll be home. So stop worrying. But I don't mean about you, I mean about Claudia. Oh, I've stopped worrying about Claudia. She doesn't need it. Good. And everybody's being most helpful and attentive, especially Jared Tucker. He'll be around on Monday, by the way. I think he's uh, your understudy on the farm. Well, don't tell him he isn't. He's a fine guy. Well, now that I've said hello, so long, David, and chin up. So long, Joe. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>